Hello everybody, welcome back to Winning with Williams. My name is Aaron, this is the Five Red Lights, and if you remember back to our previous episode, which was a little while ago now, we had a bit of a boo-boo. We uh, forgot to record the uh, race in Zandvoort, and we then crashed out in the Monaco Grand Prix. So a double DNF in the end, with a crash at Zandvoort as well. But we're now heading to Canada for a race that didn't actually happen in 2020 and again sadly isn't happening in 2021. So as you see here just adding on a couple of chassis upgrades in the hope that we can improve the weight distribution. I'm just going to make sure I've got the right power unit components in the first set of components looking a bit worse for wear. We did take a, a new engine for Monaco um, which in the end didn't do that many laps. So we're going to stick in engine components number two, mostly across the board except for the energy store which will take number one. And our best result so far this season is a 12th place which we've achieved on three occasions. And I generally tend to go quite well around Canada. So we're fast forwarding the time, bringing in some resource points up to 250 there. And will our upgrades come in? They do. Excellent. Our new parts have been completed without issue. They'll be on the car ready for Splendid. The next race okay. Let's head to the circuit Gilles Villeneuve for practice. So there's some rain due for practice two and three. And the race weather forecast is dry. And there's our performance update. We're closing the gap on Haas and Alfa Romeo, but we're still lagging behind a little bit. Um, so we're going to dive into practice one, and uh, I'll see you on the track. So let's take a couple of laps around the circuit Gilles Villeneuve. I've always tended to go fairly well around this circuit. Just doing the track acclimatization program uh, to kick things off in practice one. Running in lean revs, trying to protect the engine as much as possible. So the setup I've gone for is low drag, but hopefully uh, some rear stability because this section we're just coming up to now, which is turn 6 and turn 7, which is famously where Sebastian Vettel ran wide in the 2011 uh, running of the race, which lasted 4 hours. I tend to struggle with uh, rear traction through the right-hander on exit, and also through this chicane. As you can see, I run a bit wide and invalidate the lap. It's end practice. If I, if I uh, invalidate the lap or if I have an accident, I just do a flashback and, and continue the program. I find it's good practice, you know, you just instantly rerun what you've done, get a second chance to get your eye in rather than do another lap and, you know, you immediately get a chance to A, rectify the mistake, but B, learn from it. And this is the most crucial corner I find on the lap. So if you saw there, I just upshifted, uh, short shifted into fourth from second and minimised the wheel spin. It helps really propel the car out of the hairpin. In the final chicane, strict uh, corner cutting limits, and there you go, another uh, exceeding the track limits violation. So we'll just, again, repeat with the flashback. The key here that I found is to take a lot of curve on the first one, and then not so much on the second part. Now, I was helped, actually, in warm-up for this race. I've been playing a bit of my team. And the race I did before recording this was Canada. So that was super helpful. And uh, I'm just going to leave you now to enjoy a lap of the circuit Gilles Villeneuve.
And there we go, a lap of the circuit Gilles Villeneuve with the Williams. I'm going to crack on with the rest of practice and I'll see you for qualifying. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to a variant of this track back in 1978. It was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. We'll be seeing top speeds of around 210 miles an hour here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve with around two thirds of the lap taken at full throttle. High speed chicanes spell potential danger, especially at the infamous wall of champions. And watch out for overtaking into the hairpin and the final chicane. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Now, can I talk to you about Sebastian Vettel? They're in for a tough race today. They'll be starting out of position due to a penalty from earlier in the weekend. It's unfortunate, but it happens to everyone at some point. You just have to accept your fate, knuckle down and get on with the business of making up that deficit during the Grand Prix. So they'll be pushing hard today, one to watch for sure. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Leclerc, Herbert, and Stroll, Sainz, Ocon, Ricardo, and Lando Norris. Vettel, they've taken a grid penalty. Perez, Alexander Albon, and Gasly, Kvyat, Grosjean, Kimi Raikkonen, and Kevin Magnussen. Giovinazzi and George Russell ends our grid lineup. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. You have a great chance of getting a points paying position in today's race. We do see what you can do. And you might be wondering, what has happened to qualifying? Well, uh, there was a technical issue in that I forgot to press the button to record. And you actually missed a really good qualifying session, as you saw from the uh, rundown of the grid. We're in P5, and the uh, lap that actually put us P5, I had a DRS failure uh, on the back straight, so I didn't have DRS out of the final hairpin or on the uh, pitch straight. Um, so yeah, fifth on the grid, and if you spot in seventh place is Carlos Sainz, and he's on the mediums. So the strategy is hopefully um, hold position off the line, and then I think the front four will disappear, and we we'll have to battle Stroll and anyone coming through on the softs, but Science will be our marker. We need to make sure we build enough of a gap to stay ahead of Carlos Sainz to maintain position against him. And I'm expecting him to, to sort of be in the mix uh, later on for points, and he's the marker basically. If we can stay ahead of Sainz, we should be able to pick up a point or two in this race. I'm not expecting to be able to hang on to fifth place. We're just warming the tyres and preparing the car. Obviously, we haven't been in Q3 all season and we're starting on a set of tyres that we uh, qualified on, so I'm not sure how the tyre wear is going to be. Uh, so I'm trying to take it as easy as possible on the uh, parade lap. As you can see, I haven't quite got the front tyres into the uh, heat window, almost hitting the wall there. Luckily, if you do hit the wall on the formation lap, there's no damage. So here we go, we're forming onto the grid through the final chicane. It's normal Mercedes front row, then it's Verstappen, Leclerc, us, Stroll and Carlos Sainz, the top seven. We're going to have to wait a little while on the grid because we're not usually this far up. And we hit our marks, not doing a Pierre Gasly from the Spanish Grand Prix and overshooting. So you see Ocon there was in 8th, he's on softs, uh, just got to watch out for him coming past Science early on, um, hopefully Science can hold him up. But we're ready to start in Canada. One, two, three, four, five red lights in Canada and it's go! It's a good start, very good start, we're gaining on Verstappen, we're past Leclerc, we've almost lost it! A big slide and we're into turn one making sure we don't lose our front wing and we've held our position Ocon has jumped ahead of Stroll and ahead of Sainz and he's up into he's actually now down to 7th we're going to make sure we 
hold position and we allow Leclerc to go on his way. I think that's probably the last we'll see of him. Here's a replay of the start from the chase cam. So the lights come on and we get a really good launch. You see just here in the second phase we breeze past Leclerc but it's that swapper. We almost almost lost it and almost completely T-bone Charles. Um, I think if we hadn't had that we may well have been up into P3. We'd have had at least had a shot at getting past Max Verstappen. So we're coming towards the end of lap one and we're actually hanging on to the back of Leclerc. We're about a second behind, eight tenths and we're about a second ahead of Ocon. The uh, short shift trick coming out of the final hairpin killing the wheel spin, it works a treat. I play on a pad so there is that whole debate of the pad versus the wheel but you've still got to execute it. We've underfueled the car so we're running in standard and if we can stick in the slipstream of the guys in front which I don't really think we will be able to we can maybe run in lean with a bit of DRS assistance and save some fuel that way but it's fairly straightforward to save fuel around Canada because you're going okay you're going fast so you just have to take a big lift into into these braking zones maybe into turn six would be a good place to do it because you won't lose too much time um, and there's a nice exit through turn seven and we're just edging away from Ocon. We seem to have got a good balance early on here. The car generally seems to work better on the soft tyres than it does on the mediums. And we're hanging on to Leclerc. He's not pulling away from us. Nor is Verstappen, interestingly. So it's two green sectors, because it's lap two. And we're right in the slipstream of Leclerc to just stick with him. Three quarters of a second. And we're a second and a half clear of Ocon as we come out of the hairpin into the chicane for the second time not cutting the corners a little bit squeamish on the acceleration out but we keep it all together and the gap to Ocon is 1.5 seconds which is super handy thanks Jeff DRS enabled and we're right on the tail of Leclerc we're hanging with these guys I'm not sure what's going on. Nothing's different as far as I know. So we are here on pure merit. We're going to pick up the DRS. Nice tidy exit at turn 7. That extra downforce is working well. Use sort of my base setup and then I change the wings from uh, it's normally 2.7 and I've gone for 1.8. So the uh, less front wing you have, you have a little bit less drag because they're so wide. Uh, but obviously then you do have with a bigger rear wing you do have that drag put to the rear but you have the extra benefit of the traction out of corners and especially out of that hairpin and look at this now a quarter of a second behind Leclerc he's got DRS on Max Verstappen with two and a half seconds ahead of Esteban Ocon into lean rev saving fuel and we're in the dirty air which is going to make it a little bit tricky to get this car slowed down and oh, again sliding out of the final corner but the gap to Ocon is two seconds and we're doing a great job as we pick up our first exceeding track limits warning. But we're right with Verstappen and Leclerc. We're half a second a lap quicker than the Renault behind us. So everything is going swimmingly. Although we've made a bit of a mistake there into turn six, a bit wide. Um, is that the break that Max and Charles need? It's not because as we fast forward to the end of lap four, we're still right with them. And we're again picking up the DRS. And Leclerc is looking at Max, but I don't think he's close enough to challenge for the position. Indeed, he's not. And we're late on the brakes, trying to recover as much ERS as possible. Onto lap five. And again, still there in the slipstream. And the power that we generate out of the final out of the out of the hairpin towards the final corner is really really helping us to stay in touch as Leclerc now dives to the outside looking to make the move on Max Verstappen trying to wrong foot him into the chicane Max defends here comes Leclerc in the slipstream we're challenging from behind maybe looking to pick up any scraps from the tears that fall out from this Leclerc looking around the outside of turn one gets the inside for turn two we're going to have a look around the outside see if we can switch back Verstappen holds position holds the racing line and Leclerc can't get through now having to defend from us and we take 
uh, discretion is the better part of valour and maintain fifth place. Again, out of the hairpin. Lap seven now. We're right in the slipstream of Charles Leclerc. Again, the DRS. And this is our best chance to make the move. We're going to move to the inside. We're going to have a look. But we're actually going to pit. Lap seven is our pit window. And into the pit lane we come all together. So you can see the Renault and the two McLarens will go past, staying out an extra lap. Uh, Sainz will stay out a couple of extra laps because he's on the mediums. Off come the soft tyres, on go the mediums. Can we get out ahead of Charles Leclerc? We cannot. Um, so that was probably our best chance to jump ahead of Charles. And actually there on the inside is George Russell. Is he going to get in Charles' way? Oh, Charles with the wiggle and the delay and we're through. We've just passed a Ferrari. Unbelievable. We've just passed a Ferrari. George Russell getting in the way um, legitimately because they're racing for position. And we took advantage of Charles dithering on the exit of the pit lane. That strange weave that he, he, he did. And now we are up into a net fourth place providing that science doesn't jump us on the alternate strategy. And also... Michelle's right on our gearbox. We're going to pick up DRS as well from George, which will help us save a little bit of fuel. Good exit out of the final corner. We'll pick up the DRS. George moving to the inside. Of, I think he'll be pitting uh, this lap, so hopefully we can get the move done and he doesn't just drive into the back of us. We survived. And if you look there ahead is Max Verstappen, and he's actually being held up quite a treat from our perspective by the Alfa Romeo of Antonio Giovinazzi are we about to pass a Ferrari and a Red Bull in the same race DRS overtake rich revs but Verstappen's got the DRS as well I think Giovinazzi will dive into the pit lane he will and we're going to pick up an exceeding track limits warning sliding out of the final corner again Charles is uh, about eight tenths behind and we're going to hound Verstappen as much as possible but I would assume he's going to disappear into the distance now and chase after Valtteri Bottas the gap to him is about six seconds and we're not going to touch the Mercedes today we're just going to look to hang on to uh, what is going to be P4 from uh, Charles Leclerc but keep an eye out on Lance Stroll closing the gap as well now that he's ahead of Esteban Ocon. DRS still on Verstappen, but he's almost a second ahead, so we might not get it on the final back straight. As we fast forward here to lap 11, we are still within DRS range. Well, I think this lap we didn't actually get the DRS, but we uh, made up the ground on the brakes into the hairpin and out of it. Sainz is coming into the pits as Hamilton sets a 112.739 for a new fastest lap successfully negotiating the final chicane so science is behind us but he'll be on the soft tyre and if you have a look on the minimap there's a whole big train of cars coming along the main straight now and Carlos is going to come out right behind that lot so we are in a very strong position for points here today Charles is closing the gap behind us and that's our fight whoa we almost lost it out of turn 5 or oh, even turn 4 sorry that was a huge moment. Like I said earlier, the car seems to handle better on the soft tyres. And on the mediums, we just don't quite keep them in as, as well as I'd, I'd like. We just It just unsettles me. And you can see the way I'm driving, it's not as accomplished as it was before. And Charles is now right on my gearbox. We're a second and a half behind Verstappen. We're not going to pick up the DRS. You see they're taking a much tighter line to the hairpin than than usual. I'd prefer a late apex for the hairpin to give me a nice good straight exit but I can still manage it and uh, Charles is three quarters of a second behind but a lap later through the middle sector Charles is close enough to just do me into the hairpin before the braking zone. A little uh, love tap on his gearbox there and we're down to fifth but we're in the slipstream overtake engaged rich mixture of fuel the little wiggle there and we don't pick up the slipstream and the kind of 
uh, falters our momentum into the chicane and we're a bit tight oh no we picked up a penalty a three second time penalty which at the moment will put us in sixth because look at Stroll he's 2.9 seconds behind so hopefully we can uh, hang on to to fifth worst case sixth but if we can hang on to the back of Leclerc he might just pull us along to Verstappen because I think Charles was faster in the opening phase of the race but let's see how we go if we can hang on to Leclerc he might just pull us along we're picking up the DRS again successfully through the final chicane with no corner cuts this time and the gap is three seconds with four laps to go back to Stroll and it's five seconds back to Daniel Ricciardo in the Renault and as you can see, Leclerc has visibly closed the gap to Max Verstappen. And we're almost back to level on fuel. Skipping ahead to the end of lap 16, and Leclerc is right in the window for DRS and the slipstream and everything engaged on Max Verstappen. And Verstappen defends, defending hard to the inside. Leclerc down the outside with DRS, sweeps through. And Verstappen slightly dithery into the chicane and we can't take advantage even though we were hoping for a mistake from one of them but we're right on Max's tail who seems to have absolutely no pace right now and the gap critically back to Stroll is 3.2 seconds down to 3 seconds there as we get a little bit held up by Verstappen the car behind apparently gaining by half a second a lap and that's not what you ever want to hear now moving on to lap 17 the end of lap 17 and again right on the tail of Leclerc and Verstappen. Leclerc, the quicker car, he's pulling away from Max. We're a little bit wiggly under traction, but we're in position to have an attack on Max Verstappen. We move to the inside. He's left us a Williams car width, and we're going to make the move. We're up into P4. Tidily done on the brakes. No lockups, no corner cuts. And as we enter the final lap, we are fourth on the road, but with a three-second penalty hanging over our heads. Look at the gap back to Stroll. The start of the last lap is 3.3 seconds. And here's a replay of the move on Verstappen from off-board. He's just got no pace. It's absolutely bizarre. And look, we're in the slipstream. He leaves us the car width on the inside, and I say thank you very much. And I'll have some of that and it's a beautiful move down the inside of the Dutchman. There's only one lap of fuel remaining. One lap of fuel remaining, but only one lap of the race remaining. We're half a second clearer of Verstappen. He might actually get us with the DRS uh, on the back straight, which would be not great, because that might compromise our pace against Stroll. 3.1, 3.2 now, the gap. We're trying to get as close to Leclerc as possible. We won't pick up DRS, which would be really helpful at this point. We're 1.8 behind Charles as we go into the hairpin for the final time, which has actually been our best corner. There you go. The mid to late apex. Nice straight exit. Keep it straight as long as possible. Lewis Hamilton has won the race. Can we win the race to get fifth place? We're over a second ahead of Verstappen. I think a couple more laps and we might actually pull three seconds on Max. But as it is, it's a Mercedes 1-2. We cut the corner on the final corner. Leclerc takes third. We're going to take fourth on the road. P5 after our penalty. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Ferme. We've scored points in a Williams. Incredible. What a moment. What an unbelievable moment. Let's have a quick look at how the driver Congratulations to the team. Let's focus on the driver fifth today. place in qualifying, fifth Daniel place in the end in the race. We hang on by about a tenth of a second <laughs> from Lance Stroll. Ten massive points for Williams. What a race. What an unbelievable Grand Prix. That's how you bounce back from a double DNF. And uh, here's, here's the highlights. Just uh, enjoy these while I close out the episode. Thanks for watching. What a brilliant race. Leave a like if you enjoyed that. Uh, check out the rest of the series if you're new to it. I've already recorded the uh, next race, which is Austria. 
and uh, let's see if we can uh, move forward in that race as well with some points there too. There's the move on Charles Leclerc. But that has been the Canadian Grand Prix. A fantastic fifth place for Williams. Um, unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. It was an unreal race. We just, we just had such good pace all the way through. The car handled so well. I, I don't know what, what happened. I don't know why we were so quick. We just were. And that's all that matters. And we picked up a fifth place. Yep. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. And I will see you in the next video. My name's Aaron. This has been the Five Red Lights. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.